Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise ye the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning. I'm Pastor Henry Simon. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowship's online Sunday service. We're so excited to uh, be with you again uh, on another Sunday that God has blessed us to breathe, to live, to see another day. I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for my wife and my children. Are you thankful for anything? Give God praise today. Be thankful for everything. The Bible says in all things give thanks. Amen and amen. I'm thankful for my parents. I'm thankful, believe it or not, for my enemies. Amen. They keep me fresh. They keep me going. They keep me on my knees. Amen and amen, amen, and amen. Well, good morning to you uh, again. I am your host and teacher. I am Pastor Henry Simon. I am the founder and lead uh, uh, pastor for this new online uh, church that's been planted in uh, uh, Dallas, Texas. And so, as most of you know, we are from Southern California. Um, we were originally from uh, the South, but we relocated here to Dallas, Texas at the leading of the Holy Spirit. We have been in Southern California, and admittedly, my heart is still in beautiful uh, Orange County, California. Amen and amen. And I tell you, I'm praying that God will uh, allow us to extend our arms, our reach to Southern California as well. So to our viewers in Southern California, all up and down the West Coast, uh, we we welcome you. Uh, Central Standard Time, it is 10 o'clock here on this 12th day of December. Um, Man, we're halfway through December already, um, and so we have a couple more weeks left into the uh, um, into the the year, and we're gonna finish with a bang. We're gonna finish strong as we prepare to cross over into 2022. Amen, and amen. Well, I declare and decree that revival is coming to Texas. Revival is coming to California. Revival is coming to this nation. Revival is coming to this earth. But I want to say this morning that God is concerned about each and every one of your needs. God is concerned about you. Not so much your earthly needs, but more importantly, your spiritual needs. Amen and amen. He'll take care of your earthly needs. You know, seek ye first the kingdom. Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So what that tells me is, is that everything that I need, God has already supplied it. Amen and amen and amen. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory this morning. We thank you for this beautiful uh, Texas day. Um, nice and cool up here, um, here in Dallas. But we, we thank you for um, your gift, the gift that comes through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his death and resurrection. We thank you, Lord God, for souls, for souls, Lord God, that are coming into the kingdom, even as I speak, Father God, um, right now in the name of Jesus. Um, I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing in and through our lives. I thank you for grace and mercy. I thank you for um, the remission of sins through the blood of your son. And Father, right now, I repent of my sins. Father God, we repent of our sins, Lord God. Speak to us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as always, my wife and I, we send you greetings uh, from North Texas. We're located here in the Frisco, uh, Texas area, and uh, which is north of Dallas. And so we, we, we thank God for you. We thank God for your prayers and support. And um, we are looking forward to 
um, God doing big, big things, okay, in the weeks and months uh, to come. 2022 is going to be a phenomenal year. Get your mind off of COVID. Get your mind off of Delta and Omicron and all this other kind of thing. Get your mind set on Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, I want to invite you to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, um, Central Standard Time. That's 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time and 11 o'clock on the East Coast. And I'm about to start <clears throat> sending some uh, ads out through Facebook and maybe YouTube and get my son to help me with that. Um, and so that we can start to build our audience from um, the state of Texas. And hopefully in the months to come, we'll, we'll be in a building um, at some point, whether it's a school or um, God blesses us with a, a storefront, whatever it is. But we're asking God to uh, open some doors for us. Amen. Um, and if he opens the doors, remember, he'll supply. He'll supply the resources to take care of it. Amen. And amen and amen. So would you pray for us, walk in faith with us, and believe God for uh, uh, things in your life as well. Amen. The supernatural, that is. Believe God for miracles. The supernatural. Amen. Well, this morning, um, you'll find my or our assignment in the book of Judges. The book of Judges. This is part three of our Your Words Have Power series and so today is part three and i've entitled it praise is a weapon praise is a weapon so if you have your your bibles or your 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 app on your phone um and so on and so forth um i have my computer in front of me and i have my i just can't let this go i tell you i know the electronics and the age that we live in technology um, but I just can't let this, I uh, can't let this go. So if you, however you have it, technology or, uh, you have the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the paper version that will be, uh, be fine. So go to the book of judges, judges, um, and you'll find our assignment judges chapter one, by the way. Judges chapter 1, and we're going to read just a few verses. I say a few, but um, we're going to go verses 1 through 7. Welcome to my desk. We're going to teach. I am a teacher. Uh, in fact, I'm a high school teacher. Okay, uh, That's what I do full time. And so, um, uh, I my gift is is to teach i can preach but my gift is to teach and so uh, that's where the teeth is that's where the meat is so let's learn from the holy spirit this morning amen and amen the bible says in judges chapter one now after the death of joshua it came to pass that the children of israel ask the lord saying who shall who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me to my allotted territory that we may fight against the Canaanites. It's about to be a fight. And I likewise, uh, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. God is about to deliver it into your hand. I'm going to say that again. God is about to deliver it into our hand. And they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him. And they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Then Adonai Bezek fled. 
and they pursued him and caught cut caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather used to gather scraps under my table, as I have done, so God has repaid me. Then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Did you catch verse number five? And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites, Perizzites. Not only is God going to give you your enemies, okay, not only is God going to put it in your hand, but he's going to give you victory. That's a place to shout. What are you believing God for? I'm a faith teacher. God's going to give it to you, okay, and you're going to have victory. Well, pastor, I have cancer. Well, God's going to give you victory. Well, pastor, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't have a, a baby. Well, God's going to give it to you. God's going to, I don't have a husband. God's going to give you the victory. You, you have to receive it by faith, by faith. Amen and amen. Let's go to work. The last two weeks in our in our uh, current series, I've been teaching on how our words have power. Week one, I taught on Mark eleven, or from Mark eleven, and last week I taught from Matthew chapter twenty, verse twenty nine. Uh, and when when uh, we talked about the two blind men were sitting by the road and they heard that Jesus was was coming by, and and they cried out. Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. The people tried to shut them down and warn them to be quiet, to shut up. But the Bible says that they cried out the more. This week, our teaching is led by the Holy Spirit. Focuses on spiritual warfare. So if you don't understand anything... It's a battle, it's a fight, and it's not the people with which you see so much, it's what's behind, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's the spirit behind the person. Excuse me. And how our praise gets us the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, to our scripture. Joshua, the infamous leader, military strategist, and conqueror, is now dead. And unlike the transitionary period between Moses and Joshua, from the book of Deuteronomy to the book of Joshua, the Lord did not have a successor or a leader waiting in the wings to replace Joshua as Joshua was to Moses. Okay, did you catch that? So just about all, by this time, all the promised land had been appropriated to God's people, to the children of Israel. In other words, Joshua, he, 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 he dispersed all the land, okay, uh, to each tribe, okay, uh, and so now they were, so by this time, they were settling in and they were now strong enough to defend their land, uh, which were filled with obstacles, hurdles, and enemies who were already in the land. In other words, whatever God has promised you and I, it's ours. But be prepared for spiritual battle as you take it in the name of Jesus. As we take it by force, okay? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. As I said, Joshua is no longer their leader. He's dead. And it was now time for the children of Israel to seek out Yahweh for themselves. But they promptly demonstrated to the Lord that they still could not handle the responsibility 
of self-sufficiency, for they quickly fell into sin and idolatry. Thus the Lord would raise up judges to guide the children of Israel, but they would not listen to God's hand-picked judges either. Side note, much of what we're seeing in the church today, forget the world, much of what we're seeing in the church today is a lack of reverential fear for God and his chosen. And instead, we constantly see the works of the flesh, the love for the things of the world, and the pride of life being manifested okay, in diverse places and situations, especially among Christians, which does not bring God glory. Speaking of which, as I just told you, I'm a high school teacher, and this past week I had a 16-year-old student share with me that uh, he has been having thoughts of suicide. In fact, I, I believe he was threatening suicide. And he was dealing with deep depression. And so he had been gone for nearly a week, and when he walked into my classroom, he said, Mr. Simon, I'm so glad to see you. And he placed his head on my shoulder. And he said, I've missed this class and I've missed you. I mentioned that I had heard about his struggles. And I told him about his worth. And his value. And that he had a bright future. And that he had mattered. The student continues on to share with me that he attended a funeral this past week out of state. And a fight between family members occurred at the repast mill held at the church. The student told me, he says, Mr. Simon, it hurt me deeply that this happened between family members. Especially at church. He thought to himself, and he's a non-church goer, this is not what church is supposed to be. This is not what's supposed to happen at church, right? To which I responded, I'm sorry to hear this, but I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know him. Looking at me strangely, he said, you know the Lord? Yeah, yeah. I have a relationship with him. I want you to listen to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know him? Yes, I do. And I tell you that God has a calling on your life. God has big plans and purposes for your life, young man. His response to me immediately was, yeah, but what about the funeral? And, and all the stuff that goes on in church. Man, this is crazy. These people were in church tripping. I quickly retorted, staring at him directly in his eyes. Did you hear what I said to you? God has a calling on your life. God has big plans and purposes for your life, young man. And by this time, he's just staring at me because I've got his attention. I was just just thinking, and I'm imagining to myself, what is he, what is he thinking? It's almost like, okay, what's just happened here? What's, what's going on? If at all possible, when God opens a door, like the situation I just shared with you. Do not allow the enemy to control the narrative. Do not allow fear to stop you from witnessing for the Lord. Take authority of the situation and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Open your mouth and declare the goodness of the Lord 
declared the acceptable year of the Lord Jesus Christ. The young man wanted me to focus on the details of the foolishness of the flesh. But I resisted and stood my ground in faith and declared that you shall live and not die. Can I tell you? Can I tell you this thing that's 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 called the word of God, this thing that's called the church, it's time for us to stop playing church. It's time for us to start recognizing that when God sends people your way, people need healing. And in order for God to work through us, we have to be ready. We have to be ready in season and out of season. We have to be prepared to speak. Your words have power. You have to be prepared to speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word of the living God that brings times of refreshing, that brings healing to people's bones and marrow. With students all around, the young man just kind of just kind of walked away, and he just didn't know what was going on. But I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit will not allow him to forget this. I've prayed for him, and so God's going to bring somebody else at some point across his path to water what was sown. Our scripture today declares that the children of Israel were facing a dilemma. They needed direction. I don't know about you, but I need direction for 2022. As I said earlier, their leader, Joshua, is now dead. And they are facing a battle from the Canaanites. They're facing a battle from the enemy, and they're in need of a word from God. There comes a time in all of our lives when those who were responsible for being a vessel for leading us to Christ, or they were there for us to help nurture us, disciple us, uh, there comes a times when God gradually moves them away from you. And now certain friends, certain family members, and so on and so forth, those relationships are dead. Joshua is now dead. That relationship is dead. Their season in your life, in my life, has concluded. And God says, now you are mature enough to seek Jesus on your own. That's good teaching. So when we complain to God about this person leaving, about this person leaving, about this situation happening and about this happening, God basically is saying, okay, now it's time for you to cry out to me. Moses, then Joshua. But there was no one waiting in the wings but God. In other words, he took their eyes off of flesh. And he put their eyes on him. Now, for those of you who know your Bible, the book of Judges is one of the darkest times in ancient Israel's uh, uh, Israelite uh, uh, history. Because every man did that which was right in his own eyes, in his own sight. That's dangerous because we have to, if we choose to do that, we, we, we run the risk, okay, of um, uh, walking away from God and from the things of God. And I believe a lot of that is what has happened because God is no longer the center of our lives. Make sure that you stay with me first of the year. My first series is, is back to the basics. We need to get 
back to God. That may mean that God will remove people or has already begun to remove people from your lives that you will cry out to him, Abba, 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 that you will begin to cry out to him and not to family, not to your friends. They needed a word. The Canaanites were threatening. Their military strategist is gone. Joshua is dead. Is there anyone out there that need a word from the Lord? Anybody facing something that is much stronger than you are? Much bigger than you are? Debt, medical bills, uh, uh, perhaps a um, some sort of medical attack on your, you know, your body health issue, in other words, and so on and so forth. Is, is, there, is there anyone under the sound of my voice? Are you, are you hearing what I am saying? Well, God has a word for you today. And yes, it points right to Jesus. The children of Israel said, Lord, who shall go up first? Okay, for us against the Canaanites. The very first thing that we should do is look to Jesus. Very first thing. Who shall go up against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord answered, bless God. The Lord answered, and the Lord said, Judah shall go up. For indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. So, Judah means praise. And what God would have all of us to know or to remind those of us who do know it, we just don't practice or just we just don't do it. You have to begin to send your praises up, okay, before the battle. In the battle, and once you leave the battle, in other words, with the victory, we continue to have an attitude of praise before God. Judah shall go up. The first thing that we should do when we're encountering something that uh, uh, that's life-threatening. God says right here to the children of Israel that Judah shall go up. Judah was the fourth son born to Jacob. And as I said, Judah's name means praise. Your next blessing, hear me, is predicated upon you sending up Judah into your situation. I'm going to say that again. Your next blessing is predicated. Whatever you believe in God for, it's predicated upon you sending up Judah into the situation. In other words, you're sending up praises up to God. 2022, 2022 is predicated upon you sending up, upon me, sending up Judah into 2022. So the Bible says in verse 3 that Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me to my allotted territory that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Now you have to understand this. Who did God say, who did God say that, uh, uh, He's given the victory too. He's given it to Judah. But Judah goes and asks Simeon to come and help me. Did you, did you hear that? Because you know Simeon means hearing. So as you go into 2022 and you bring God the sacrifice of praises, not only is, is Judah going up, but God is saying that I hear you. In other words, 
You cannot praise me without me. You're getting it. You cannot praise me without me hearing you. S Judah goes up, and the Bible says that Simeon goes with him. So any time that we are praising God, God hears us. God hears us. Simeon was the second born son to Jacob. And as I said, his name means hearing. And so as we send the praises up, can I tell you that praise is a weapon? Praise is a, is a weapon. I'm going to get more into that here shortly. The Bible says in verse 4, Then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. I've put it in your hand. I've put the power. I've put the situation. I've Put it in your hand. I can trust you with that sickness. I can trust you with those children. I can trust you with that money. I can trust you with that situation. I can trust you with that new job. And the Bible says they killed 10,000 men at Bazet. If one can chase a, a, a thousand. And two. If you know your Bible. 10,000. Judah and Simeon, I'm telling you, you can do some damage with your praise. With your praise. With your praise. I'm not talking about hurting people in the flesh. I'm talking about hurting the enemy in the spirit. Hurting the enemy in the spirit. Are you, are you with me this morning? And the Bible says in verse 5, And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek. And they fought against him. Now, this is where things kind of uh, things kind of change a little bit here, because not only is Judah uh, uh, fighting the Canaanites and the Perizzites, but God also has a special interest in this. One. God has a special interest in this one. And the Bible says, they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Then Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued him and caught him uh, and cut off his thumbs and toes. Why? Well, Adonai, Bez uh, Adonai Bezek, he, he gives us, he gives us a, a, a insight into what he did to others. So it came back to him. Verse 7 says, And Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather scraps under my table. As I have done, so God has repaid me. Then he, uh, then they brought him to Jerusalem where he, he died. Now, research into Middle Eastern uh, uh, culture and traditions and practices suggests that a person without thumbs, just think about it, and big toes, incapacitates. Incapacitates the person to the point that it would be relatively impossible to perform any task with the hands. And without the big toes, the person could not walk, much less run. He was, he was brutal against these kings that he conquered. It was a form of torture because it, 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 was, it was extremely difficult to function humanely and therefore required these maimed kings, these men, to be dependent upon Adonai Bezek as sovereign king of all. You better hear me. Some believe that ancient Israelites did the same to Adonai Bezek when he was captured to not only teach him a lesson by duplicating what he did to 70 kings he captured, but to also put to shame and to diminish 
this mighty king's character and so-called power permanently, thereby placing him in a state of dependency on others. In other words, it is my opinion, and my opinion only, Adonai Bezek was a wicked king who wanted to be worshipped by all kings of the earth. As evidenced by the 70 kings that he brutally tortured and destroyed their reigns and kingdoms. Sound familiar? It appears to me that this wicked king, Adonai Bezek, mirrored Lucifer. Who planned and attempted an unsuccessful coup of God's throne in heaven. I believe that Adonai Bezek too desired to be like God. He wanted to be like the God of the Hebrews, the God of the universe. The Hebrew meaning of Adonai Bezek means lightning. Lightning or, or and in chains. Now, now listen to me. Jesus says in Luke chapter 10, uh, Luke said, it, Jesus said in Luke 10 and verse 8, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 2 Peter 2 and 4 says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Jude 6, the New Living Translation says, And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness waiting for the great day of judgment pastor what are you saying Adonai Bezek and all who will follow in his footsteps will be taken down lightning quick Bezek was promptly taken down by Judah. Can I tell you your praise has power. Your praise, your and my praise unto the Lord Jesus Christ has power. Can I tell you also that as you go forward today, as you go forward into 2022, if there's something that God has promised you and those who are like Adonai Bezek, those who are filled with pride, and so on and so forth, because you serve the risen Christ, because you offer him praise, I'm telling you that God is getting ready to cut some toes off. God is getting ready to remove some thumbs. In other words, God is getting ready because of you. And your faith in him. God is getting ready to move some people. Because you see, the truth, the, 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 the truth is, is that there's only one Adonai. He is the ancient of days. He is Yahweh. He is Adonai. He is alone the one to be praised he is the one alone who is to be glorified what Adoniah Bezek wanted was much like Nimrod in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 11 I believe it is Nimrod wanted to wait wanted to build a tower all the way up to God he wanted to wage war with God. Adonai Bezek, he wanted the men of the earth to, to worship him. And so if he caught you, and if he was able to conquer your kingdom, he cut your thumbs off, he cut your, 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 your big toes off, so that you would be dependent upon him. But you have to understand, that spirit that is currently going on in the church now, 
We are so independent of God. We don't need God for this. We don't need God for that. Yes, I'm teaching. I'm preaching now. We don't need God. The, the, we, we've lost our way, our dependence upon God by faith. And what's happening in the church today is that you can live life the way that you see fit because I don't need you can I tell you you will be taken down God will bring this spirit down so those of us who are in the church that are not doing what we're supposed to be doing and we've placed on ourselves the title Adonia I tell you prophetically, God is going to be, oh, he's already doing it. He's shaking. He's shaking the earth. He's shaking the church. Uh, the church. God is shaking the nations. And anything that can be shook, okay, it will be. And those that remain, okay, you'll know that they are God's chosen, they're God's people, that they're living right, and so on and so forth. So the children of Israel, they, instead of killing Adonai Bezek, which according to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 24, they should have just utterly destroyed him. And just, 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 and just been done away, uh, done, done, done away with it. But for whatever reason, they did to him what was done to 70 other kings. It's my opinion. God allowed it. To show us. That we are not his equal. Nebuchadnezzar went down this same road. But Nebuchadnezzar repented. If you remember. For those of you who know your Bible. Nebuchadnezzar he went down the same road. And God put him on his knees. But he restored him. Because he. Uh, he put him in, 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 if you remember, he put him in the wilderness and he was eating like an animal. And he came to and he understood there is only but one God. Because Nebuchadnezzar wanted all of men to bow down to him. Be careful about following people who are all about themselves. And after about six, seven years, God restored Nebuchadnezzar. I've come here with a message that praise is a weapon. Also, your praise will expose what's illegitimate and what's legit. So as God begins to move on your behalf, as God begins to move on our behalf and God begins to do this and, 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 and move this person and move this situation and give you the building and give you the house and not them and not that, God, he's, he's showing you that I'm for you. And if I'm for you, no one, okay, can be against you. They'll resist you. But they, 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 they can't, they, they can't succeed. Jesus says the gates of hell shall not prevail. Adonia is a divine name. Adonia means master or lord, which means that he is sovereign, matchless. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of of lords there are many kings on the earth there are many lords but there's but one king and his name is jesus there's but one lord and his name is jesus he is adonia he is the master and our lord he is sovereign and his rule and his reign on of heaven and earth is forever and ever and ever into eternity he is worthy of your and my praise all honor and glory and praise is due to his holy name, not to some man. You see, by cutting off the thumbs and cutting off the toes, notice what Adonai Bezak says. He says, these men, 
They took food from beneath my table. That's how much he has subjugated them. He was ruthless. He was wicked. He tortured. He tortured these men. And now Adonai Bezak finds himself in the same place, fallen down like Lucifer. Why? Because the children of Israel, they did what God said. Not only did God give them victory in their land, but also, that's why I say, I, I believe that God, um, he, he, he had a, a special purpose in this as well. While they were doing their thing, they were tearing down people who were not living the way that they should have been treating people. It matters the way we treat people. It matters. Can I tell you that he is Yahweh? He's God Almighty. Jesus is his name. And he's worthy of all of our praise. He is worthy of our praise forever and ever and ever. In conclusion, I was sharing this verse of scripture with my wife the other morning and the Holy Spirit brought it up again. Genesis chapter 49 verses 8 through 10. Jacob is getting ready to die and he's speaking blessings upon his sons. Now remember I told you Judah. Judah was the fourth son. So Reuben, number one. Simeon, number two. Levi, number three. Okay. Now remember Simeon and Levi. They murdered men at Shechem. Circumcised the men and while the men were, were healing. They murdered the men. So, so, so Jacob, he rebukes number one, number two, and number three for their actions. Then he comes to Judah, number four. Look at what's he, what uh, Jacob says. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Can I tell you that praise is a weapon? your hand so in the spirit what we're doing to the enemy is literally choking him the problem is is that we find ourselves always complaining and griping against god instead of using our mouth okay instead of using our mouth james 4 and 3 i believe says something to the effect um uh james says uh, brothers and sisters we 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 out of out of out of one mouth comes blessing and curses and james says brothers and sisters this ought not be check me on that james 4 and 3 but i believe that's what it says in other words we're blessing god one day and then we're cursing him another day we're complaining when, when you understand the word of God, that if you use your mouth as a sword in the spirit, not your fist in an airplane to hit a flight attendant, but if you hold your peace and if you speak the word of God, you have power in the spirit if you're living righteously. Judah, you are he whom the brother your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. That means a young cub, a young lion cub. From the prey, and I'm going to come back to that. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down and lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall uh, ruse him or rouse him? And I believe one version, uh, uh, one uh, version I read, it says that he crouches. He crouches. Lions crouch. The scepter, that's a sword. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. In other words, this is established. It's not going to change. 
The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Until Jesus comes, praise is the weapon that we use. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now I tell you, and I told you in verse 9, it says Judah is a lion's whelp. It, it, it's 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 the youth, the young. What do you mean, Pastor? Psalm eight and two. David says, "Out of mouth, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, those who are nursing, has thou ordained strength because of your enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy uh, and the avenger." Matthew 21, 16, Jesus says, Do you hear what these children are saying? They ask him, Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children, young cubs, from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth praise. What are you saying? Childlike faith. Not to be childish. Not to be childish, but being like a child. In other words, you're humble before God. God ordains praise from these people, and there's power in it. It's so powerful that it's a weapon that the enemy rather not rather not come near, because you're gonna chase. You're going to see uh, the dead raised. You're going to see, uh, 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 you know, those who are, are sick. You're going to see them healed. Blind eyes opened. Now, this is this is a deep teaching, and it's, it's not going to be for everyone. But for those of you who understand that your praise, when you're in the shower, when you're in your car, when you're in that situation, you're in that situation, and it's difficult. And you still have the audacity to set up praises. That's effective. That's effective. But pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't have to. Get our minds off of so much what's going on around us. COVID and, 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 and price of eggs and milk and bread and gas and, and so on and so forth. And. Uh, the lack of goods and services. I believe that God is 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 really really trying to get the earth's attention to look up to Him, because the spirit of Adonai Bezek is prevalent. We're all about ourselves. When I praise Him, when I pray, and when I praise. It keeps me humble. It keeps me in the right perspective. I struggle too. You're not listening to someone who doesn't. I struggle too. So I have to work at it just like everyone else. Amen? Are you ready to go and possess what's yours? Are you ready for 2022? Judah must always go up first because Judah is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you, you give us your word to instruct us, to uh, assist us, to help us. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Who shall go up? Judah. Lord, teach us to praise you. Teach us not to complain and criticize. Teach us to be satisfied. Teach us, Lord God, to understand that you are more than enough. You are our portion. Praise. Who shall go up? Who shall go up for me? 
into 2022? Who shall go up for me into my marriage? Who shall go for, uh, 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 up for me into this situation on my job? Who shall go up for me? It's my relationship with you. It's my prayer life. It's my praise. My worship unto you. Amen and amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to give you an opportunity right now to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In other words, once your name is written, once the angels have written your, your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will be with Jesus forever and ever and ever. And all it takes is for you to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. It's as simple as that. Amen? Amen. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Have your way. Be the Lord and master of my life. I will give you praise forever and ever. I repent of my sin. Have mercy on me. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He is Adoniah. He is Adoniah. He is Yahweh. He is to be praised. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of this. Praise is a weapon. It's not us just singing a tune. It's not just us singing and, and so on and so forth. I, I, I want you to know that when you sing unto the Lord, uh, uh, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble. I, I, I want you to know, and I, I think we, we just don't, uh, uh, we don't fully understand that because we're being fed, uh, uh, you know, by Facebook and, and Instagram and, you know, Twitter and all these social media, uh, um, you know, um, apps that are out there. Uh, we're being fed by the television, YouTube and this and that or whatever. And there's such a spirit of Adonai uh, Bezek out there that we want to be, we want everyone to worship us. This is what Adonai Bezek wanted. Just wanted everyone to, to worship him. He wanted all the kings. I, I want everybody to bow before me. I want all these followers. I, I, I need this. We need Jesus. Amen. We need Jesus. I can't tell you that um, enough. And that is why we're praying for revival. Amen. Because we're in a dark, dark world, dark, dark times now. And we need the light of God. His name is Jesus. We need him. We need him. Lord, we need you. We need him to open our eyes. Amen. We need mercy. We need him. I know I do. I need him. In my marriage, I need him in my personal life, my professional life, my prayer life. Uh, as a parent, I need him. I need him in every aspect because the enemy is always looking for an occasion to come in. He's always looking for a way. But God, who is my rock. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. My wife and I, we, we truly, truly uh, pray uh, God's blessings upon you. And... Uh, May God cause his face to shine upon you. May God be merciful and gracious to you. May God cover everything that you have, your children, your going in and coming out, all your possessions, in Jesus' name, even your soul. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to uh, Faith Light Fellowship's online uh, service. I hope someday to meet you in person uh, in a building. And For those of you who are out of state, you're not here in the Dallas area. When we come into our building, we'll still have the cameras rolling and you'll be able to tune in and, and get your, your feed uh, from us if this ministry is, is uh, definitely being a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. We will be here again next week on the 18th, I believe it is, uh, next Sunday. And then uh, and then uh, the 25th, I think Christmas, 
Saturday, Sunday, we'll be traveling, so we may not be on that weekend, but we'll come back and see you um, um, after that for the first of the year so that we can uh, begin uh, our first series as we cross over into 2022. Amen. I'm excited. God loves you. God, uh, 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 he hears you. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Amen. God bless you.